Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we begin by taking a look at the contract screen because we've got so many missions underway that our funding might be a little bit tight. Looks like 2 million but of course our launches cost a lot and the colonization modules cost a lot. So I wanted to pick up a contract. The most lucrative contract here uh, seems to be this uh, station contract down here. I mean we can take a look at all of them. And uh, there's a Class A Asteroid 1, there's a Class C Asteroid Science Mission, there's Explore the Moon, there's this one for Magnetic Survey, or Orbital Survey of the Moon. I mean, uh, summing them in total, you could get a decent amount, but individually they're not very lucrative. This one is uh, fairly lucrative, rescuing Ted Free from the surface of Minmus. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, let's say, 300,000 just to round off. And yeah, they're, they're all pretty scant, except for the station one. The station one gives us uh, 775,000 in total. And thankfully, uh, even though it requires a station in orbit around the sun, it doesn't specify which orbit around the sun. So that's okay. Because if it specified like a really tight orbit around the sun, that would be very, very problematic. But all it wants is an orbit around the sun and antenna, docking port, and can generate power, uh, facility supporting five Kerbals, cupola, and that's it. So if I could just do this, I mean, I don't really want a station around the sun. I don't think it's particularly useful, but if we can make it really cheap, as cheap as possible, then we could at least reap the reward of this contract fairly quickly. So I'm going to work on building that and then we'll proceed with the other missions on our docket which is the Moho Scanner, Moho Lander, Duna Colony 1, Duna Colony 3, all the Duna Colony stuff though we do have to keep track of our life support situation uh, I can't do that here but I can do it in the tracking station and the question is how much time the greenhouses give us right we just established um, production of supplies in C2 on the surface of Minmus and the Moon and all of our Kerbals are in the main base modules except Sigmore is in the Minmus Cycler but that has a recycler on it so this 87 days is not really 87 days I think um, Voyager has 200 days which will cover most of these missions and we should really do something with that though um, Hallery Kerman is not going to be happy in about 40 minutes but can deal with it being home for another year or so. But at least uh, Ted uh, Ted Rod can deal with it for 47 more days? Hmm, we'll have to maybe see about that. Let's take a look at Voyager, but I mean it's got supplies but not habitation. And then uh, here we've got 55 days, but I'm hoping that with the greenhouses working it's more than 55 days and this here, our moon base, is more than 67 days. So we'll see about that. At least for those bases, the habitation is not a problem for the foreseeable future. I really want to get through um, the Duna Colony stuff. I don't think we'll send anything to Drez, not on our budget right now. We want to see the Duna stuff fulfilled first, and maybe even the Jewel missions fulfilled first before we move on to Drez stuff. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's turn to Voyager and see what that looks like. Oh wait, uh, it looks like things have changed. Now as we turn to Voyager, hold on, let me move this down. Uh, this is the Voyager mission with a uh, broken solar panel at the bottom. But yeah, now it looks like a Ted Rod is indefinite and Hallery is a year and 158 days. So that's changed. It's got a nomomatic here. So that should be doing agroponics, though it doesn't have any fertilizer. So that probably, I don't know, is it still producing supplies? Possibly. Anyway, it's definitely got enough supplies. And yeah, I mean, obviously it has enough habitation for this crew. I don't know why there was any doubt about that. Let's make sure, um, yeah, habitat is on. If there's any sort of recycling that we could do, that's all on. Yeah, I mean, and there's some, there's fertilizer here. There's supplies here and fertilizer here, so. The Nomadic can definitely use that. So plenty of opportunity for them to hang out. Now of course it was meant for really long range voyages. This is testing its, uh, the capability 
for this kind of ship to do long range voyages. You know, it has 3,392 meters per second left here. So they're just hanging out around Minmus, making sure that this would work. Alright, and it seems like it's doing well. Okay, well, let's turn to uh, launching that uh, solar station. Yeah, well, I won't call it solar station because it's not soul, the star is not soul, but um, station around the sun, and then we'll move on to the Moho stuff. Okay, so in an effort to make it as cheap as possible, I've decided to go with uh, what is a fairly typical monoblock design. I've called it monoblock station, which means that uh, basically the entire thing becomes the station. The entire first stage, core stage, is the station. And it just has the stuff, yeah, we've got the cupola, we've got the hitchhiker storage container, and uh, the one kerbal plus the four kerbals makes five kerbals per requirement. Put the antenna up here, mainly to block the node up here, because there's a node up here and I want to block that for aerodynamic purposes. Um, I don't know if the aerodynamics really works like that anymore, but probably does. I didn't want to put a fairing because that costs extra, like uh, 3,000 or so. And uh, I did uh, decide to go with a uh, bonus uh, inline stabilizer, so we did uh, pay extra for that. And uh, some good battery power there. Maybe we could get cheaper batteries. And I also decided to put a container here. I think the container is pretty cheap. Yeah, it's only like 95 funds, so that's not particularly expensive. And then the rest of this is fuel tank and then a mainsail. I, I don't know if I could have used a cheaper engine. I mean, we've got a pretty high thrust weight ratio, and I've already tuned down the thrust on the boosters. Um, we end up with a two thrust weight ratio by the time we get done with the boosters. Let's see. Um, the, the thing is, gimbling is also important. But the mainsail is 13,000, skipper is 5,000. Let's just see what happens if we put a skipper down here. And we need to actually put it on the launch stage. Uh, well, if we, you know, that's not too bad. If we actually, well, the, that thrust weight ratio is pretty bad, but the efficiency is pretty nice. Let's see. Let me uh, tighten it up a little bit. Make it less heavy. A little bit worried about the gimbling and the control. I put fins on just in case, because that seemed like a good idea. This should be able to do it. Maybe a little bit smaller. Orbit being, you know, 4,000, escaping another 1,000. This has more than enough. We'll have the thrust weight ratio more than one there. Yeah, now it's, now it's even cheaper. I, I get rid of that mainsail. Who needs a mainsail? That's good. And we're recovering the boosters, of course. Anything else? It's pretty simple. I mean, of course, we've got these little uh, canards as fins. I've tuned down their uh, authority because I didn't want them wiggling too much. Yeah, I'll, I'll like the main, uh, the skipper first, and then the boosters. So that's our station. Two docking ports on the side. I've got that antenna up there, so all the requirements are met. And of course, the solar panel is over here. Well, it's not the most spectacular design, but hopefully, uh, it'll give us the maximum bang for our buck, so that we can fulfill the contract and get all the funds. All right, let's launch it. You know, thinking about it, I might have wanted to put a station in some sort of cycler orbit around uh, between Kerbin and Duna and experiment with that. But, and, you know, something like the Voyager, another uh, sort of expensive sort of mission. Or we could have done it with the Voyager, but we have to build a new ship anyway after taking the contract. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to make something expensive because of our budget right now. So we'll wait. I mean, maybe we'll get another contract for that, or maybe we'll have some other excuse to build that sort of thing. Also, I need to work on my knowledge of cycler orbits. I've been saying that for a while now, but it's still true. Uh, anyway, here we go. Ignition and launch. Of course, we're launching without any crew. 
that is a code core in the service module. Kind of dumped the mob repellent. We didn't need that. Okay, off they go. Woo, too close. Woo, very close. Alright, but it was barely, barely safe there. Technically, it is configured as material kits. So on the off chance that some Kerbals decide to board this, they could uh, scrap the the fins and the engine. So that's an option. Should probably also reattach that antenna to something somewhere else. Uh, we probably still need to go up a bit. Too much drag here. Okay, two boosters recovered. A little bit higher than the six meters per second we sh we're supposed to do, but all right. And it looks like it's satisfied with the station overall. Just need to put it in the right place. Let's keep it to around 100 kilometers. So we're coasting now, coasting, and that's good enough. We just need to eject out. Maybe we should plan some sort of uh, place to be. Duna's not in the worst place ever for a sort of cycler orbit. We've got 1,700. We can easily transfer to it. Let's see. I mean, in theory, it's not in a bad place for a cycler orbit, but again, it's not like I've done a whole lot of work on that subject. So, what we would like is for this to return back here. That's two years, so this is too, too far, and obviously we're not hitting Duna there. So we would like to come back after two years and hit this location on Kerbin's orbit again. Well, that's a, well, hold on, one year, 365, that is the, uh, okay, that's two years right there. That makes it fairly likely that we're going to hit Kerbin again if we go around, though it's not showing it. Problem is, you can see that we're not really hitting Duna at all, so it's not much of a cycler orbit, but perhaps we can just shift our orbit to make that happen. Uh, though we will have to burn out a little bit. Oh, no, oh, no. We can sort of see what's happening here. We want to hit it there and come back around. The problem is, while we'll definitely hit uh, Kerbin again if we set our orbit to uh, two years, Duna's not going to be in the, you know, it's not going to uh, hit it again. Well, there's a Duna encounter. Uh, this is not the best timing for this. We can hit Duna all right using a lot more delta-v than we ought to but then we, when we come back here it's not the right time to hit Kerbin again maybe we should just uh, aim to hit Kerbin again when we once again have some sort of opportunity to plan so we'll make it the most efficient orbit that will come back I well, we wish it showed us coming back, but because we're still in Kerbin's SOI, it doesn't. It doesn't show the return. So, that's what we'll do. 1,300, and this will be the orbit around the sun that we end up with for now. At the very least, it could serve as a relay. Okay, here we go. We are on escape. And we fulfilled the node. Alright, let's go out there and see what's what. Okay, looks close enough. And, uh, yeah, we filled the contract. Maintain stability and everything. So here it is in orbit around the sun. And in two years, we'll see it again. 
So let me make sure to put a little alarm for that. We'll put a dummy maneuver node here. Up uh, with that maneuver node, we seem to be seeing a. Uh, that looks like a crash course at Kerbin. It's not showing a periapsis. So maybe it's not quite so dummy uh, maneuver node. We aimed it so well in terms of our timing that we would have actually crashed into Kerbin after two years. So, yeah, okay, well, um, so we'll need to do this maneuver to avoid that, otherwise it'll go all, all Skylab on us. Anyway, okay, so let's add that alarm. Right. Okay, Moho scanner time. Okay, so here we are with our Moho scanner, and just for clarification, we've already done the scanning of Moho, we are now proceeding on to a flyby of EVE. So it's doing a secondary mission right now, heading off to EVE. And so we're going to time warp with it. Um, electric charge is a little bit tight. Maybe I shouldn't time warp with it. Also, communication is pretty bad right now. You can see we've only got limited probe control there. Bad things can happen at any time. We've lost communication, for instance. So that's not good. I did not plan for that. We do still have some Delta V to do other things with this probe, if necessary. That's just a dummy uh, maneuver. We were going to try and encounter Gilly here, but without any communication, obviously, that's not going to happen. Not the best orientation for our solar panels, huh? It says direct sunlight which means that it doesn't count this as blocking it and after it goes out we'll see uh, well let me go ahead and try and plot something right now to see what we can do after this but then again I'll have to make sure that whatever we plot will be in communication range of Earth not Earth, Kerbin um, probably by the time we're over there, Kerbin, let's see, that's 104 days. Kerbin should be around here. We should have communication there or right around there-ish. Yeah. Okay, so maybe making a plot out there will get us another encounter with uh, Eve or something like that. Let's see. Actually, quite surprisingly, that was our very first flyby of Eve. And we are escaping, we escaped the gravitational influence of Eve. And, of course, that's a solar orbit achievement. So, yeah, well, it actually accomplished something. Uh, let me see if it can accomplish more. Okay, well, the probability of success is slim, but we might as well try it. So, we've got an EVE encounter there. I haven't brought it very close to EVE because uh, we have to do two, two burns. And we'll have to make sure that we get uh, the first one correct before we really fine-tune the second one. The first one is actually an inclination change to flatten our orbit with respect to EVE. Uh, unfortunately, we have to do it in a bad place, which is close to the sun. We would rather do it further away from the sun, but uh, since we're expecting that we'll have communication once we're out over here, um, yeah, we'll just uh, take that. Maybe we'll have to wait uh, another orbit, and maybe then we could do it at our apoapsis instead, which would be better. But right now, we're seeing it take uh, 591 meters per second. And then after a few orbits, we have this maneuver of 334 meters per second to get that encounter. And so this just boosts our orbit just a little bit from this blue line to that so that we can encounter it over there. So that's the idea. And we'll see, we'll see how it works. So first, first one we'll queue up there. Uh, now we have the Moho lander. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, here we are. We've time warped until this probe is now approaching MOHO. So we're going to enter MOHO SOI, make orbit, hopefully, and then we have to fulfill the contract, which is transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of MOHO. And for that, we have a lander. Okay, so this is our approach. 38 minutes to periapsis, but we might as well get a little bit closer which we're almost at the right orientation to do. There we go. Uh, 
let's see, our orbiter doesn't have any uh, actual equipment on. Oops, no, close on details. So it's uh, it's not like it's gonna do too much scanning, though it does have antennae, so it can relay stuff. Also, oh, this can dock back up with it, you can see. So that's potentially handy. I don't like how those antennae clip the solar panels, though. That was bad planning on my part. We should do some experiments. Uh, I think it's an okay time to collect some solar particles, for instance. I mean, this is Moho already, after all. Uh, well, I mean, we could keep them until we dock back up with it, but we might as well transmit this bunch. Oh, radio plasma wave scan we haven't done. 63 science. Definitely transmit that. That's probably good enough, close enough. Let's uh, let's bring back in these instruments because it's gonna be tough to land with them poking out like that. Okay, let's get to periapsis. Let's make sure periapsis allows us to maintain communication. Communication line is going out this way. Okay, but uh, this does have a long stage time, so let's see how long it's actually going to take to make orbit. How much delta V? Okay, we want a nice orderly orbit, and it looks like that's going to take a fair chunk of delta V from this stage. I'll start doing the burn at about seven minutes beforehand. So they gave us radiator panels, right? I don't have them on here. So I'm curious to see whether we're going to get any overheating. We're, you know, at Moho-like orbit. So we're close to the sun, so it's hot and everything. So is this going to be a problem or not? We do have some regular scientific instruments. Let's say perform all science. Um, reset the goos. Temperature scans not transmittable. Atmosphere high over Moho, sure. That's a lot. But another goo. Okay, we just passed uh, periapsis and we're about halfway through the burn. Probably I should have started earlier. Uh oh, we've lost connection. Oh, I think uh, Moho is blocking our way here. Well, that's potentially all right. By the time we regain connection, we'll probably still be trying to make orbit at this rate. Man, we're uh, missing by a lot here. Good thing we packed extra fuel. Well, we're probably gonna end up suborbital for a bit. I could probably throttle down right now, even though I don't have connection. I don't know. Mm, nope, doesn't seem like it. Okay, so throttle is a no-go. We're just gonna keep burning until we've got a connection. That could be problematic. We have an an orbit of sorts. We really need to be able to communicate. Uh, boy, with us pulling our orbit down like that, 
Are we gonna be able to communicate? We need to get higher up. Oh, now we gotta flip our orbit. That's even worse. Uh oh. This is not good at all, folks. We don't want to flip our orb. No! Okay, well, at least it's going back to retrograde. But now it's going to hold this position? I don't want to hold this position. Okay, well, maybe I can. As it goes around this way, maybe I can tell it to go prograde. Yeah, Smart ESS doesn't obey the laws of communication. So that might save us. Well, okay, I'm totally cheating now. I'm just trying to hold our orbit to something reasonable while while we try and get connection back. And here I thought this was a shoe in Maybe I should have left the Moho scanner in orbit. This seemed like such a good idea. Alright, well that's the end of that stage. And based on our velocity, I don't think... Oh, well, it started to heat up there too. Well, if only it shut down a little bit earlier. But, yeah, we, um, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to have enough to land. I doubt it. But we'll see. We'll need communication first. I'm going around this way. Ah, uh, now we have communication. Okay. Well... Let's go around once, do some science. Um, I don't know if that's going to be low over Moho. Technically, well, this, this whole stage is uh, quite a disaster, but we can adjust our orbit using RCS. Um, so let's actually go to periapsis, bring that apoapsis down to help our lander out. Well, we definitely want to land around here since we have good communication and everything. Wow, 800 and... Well, this delta V reading had better be wrong. Come on. Otherwise, we're in trouble. It's possible that it is wrong because it's like assuming that we're going to be still stuck to this. Well, so much for trying to send this back home and recovering the data like that. Okay, that's as low as I want to go. I want to bring the periapsis down. We'll have to do that while we still have communication on that side. Oh, well, that's the end of the mar propellant. I don't know if that's going to be low over Moho right there. But let's time warp. Lose connection. Gain connection. Somehow that seems to be not quite right, but I'm not going to complain. Right. Let's do some... Well, I don't know. We're probably not low over. Let's see. Log imaging data. Yeah, still high. Maybe it's time to separate the lander and see what we've really got. Okay. Well, we've got plenty of fuel, 
so that's good. That's not going to be our problem. Okay, well, we'll go with this approach and try and land around here somewhere. It's possible we can try for different biomes and everything. Just above. Okay, canyon. Should be able to get some new science here. Log observations. Yeah. Uh, Midlands, actually. Oh, I wanted that canyon. Okay. Seventy-two for radio plasma wave scan near Moho. Forty for magnetometer scan. Better watch our power. Collect solar particles. Just eighteen for those. I think I'll do perform. Oh well, let's yeah perform all science in this case works. Uh, in space near Moho for the mystery goo, I'll do that. Yeah, transmit that one. There's another one, so we'll do that on the surface. 45-ish for temperature scan. 67 for atmospheric pressure scan. Okay, that should be a near Moho. We can retract these now. Okay, we'll try for an overabundance of caution as we land. Let's start trying to land around here. Highlands, huh? Well, I mean, now that it's Highlands, maybe we can do some other science. Yep, uh, orbital telescope. Back to Midlands. Too bad I missed that canyon, though. That canyon right there. That's a different biome. That's That over there is a different biome, too. That sort of seabed. Well, we're landing here for the sake of communication, so... Okay, taking a look at the suicide burn countdown now. We'll do it five seconds ahead of time. Actually, I want to land here-ish. Uh, those, those are quite cliffy. Let's try and avoid those. not be possible. We seem we seem to be aimed right for them. Okay, then how about over here? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's try and go up here then. So, it'll be Moho's Midlands. Okay, we have landed. 1,123 meters per second left. And let's do some science. And fulfill that contract. That's Ike. That's Duna. We gotta do all that stuff too. But let's let's do the ones that aren't going to be... Oh, uh, that's only meant to be deployed in space. Sensitive panels. Well, this is still space, technically. There's no atmosphere here. Let's do the goo. 126 signs for the goo. Well, hold on. Uh, no, that wasn't the goo. It's only 42 signs for the goo. Uh, make sure we have power. Transmit data. Temperature scans 56. Atmospheric pressure scan is 84. The seismic scan is 126. It's pretty good. We're really racking up the signs here. And we fulfilled the contract. Yep, completion rewards. And we also got the world's first milestones, suborbital flight above Moho and landing on the surface. Okay, but uh, I don't know if we can log magnetometer data here. Oh, we can. 50. Radio plasma wave might be a little bit harder. Yeah. It's not for atmospheric or surface deployment, it says. Log visual observations. 
No, I, I would like to use the camera here, but apparently that's not a thing. But don't worry, uh, well, log imaging data, no, that doesn't work either. But we do have special surface instruments, so collect uh, core sample. Surface of atmospheric planets? Ah. XKCD? Hmm. Um, Alright, how about this one? Collect laser data. Okay, that's 60 science. But we carry this core sampler for no reason, apparently. I don't know why only on atmospheric planets, but I guess it's trying to get the atmospheric history of the planet. Well, uh, let's get some more science while we're here. I mean, uh, until I finally derp with it. Uh, maybe we should head this way and try and land here. That seems like an interesting thing to do. And we should still have communication there. So we'll head west. Uh, there's that canyon there. I don't know if we can like stop along the way, go there and then go there. Well, here, here, here let's try it. No, uh, I don't feel like it's doable. I'd rather get the big flatlands than that canyon. have to do a suicide burn. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll try for that spot there, because if you take a look at our velocity, we're going to be pretty suicidal on the suicide burn as it is. Okay, I'm going to have to take the suicide burn countdown very seriously this time. I don't know if we're going to make it into that crater, or even if that crater is Midlands or not. Could just be Midlands, and then this will all be for naught. Should have gone for that canyon down below. Uh, our velocity is getting really high now. I hope that's suicide burn count. Out. Minor craters, all right. Hope it's right. Oh, we're coming down fast. Uh, uh, uh. Come on, absorb some things. Absorb some things. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Well, minor craters. We're here. Log visual. Well, we can't do that. Can't do. Okay, but seismic reading we can do. We just created some extra seismic readings. 126. Yep. Temperature scan. That's 56. Atmospheric pressure scan. 84. We can do this laser one. And that's 60. We're losing electric charge though. Uh, we lost both of our solar panels. So, well, this will be it for this probe, obviously. And uh, 50 from the magnetometer scan. And that's it. I think it's done all the things. We should have done some stuff in flying over it, but obviously I didn't have a whole lot of time. But yeah, flying over the minor craters would have given us extra. But hey, I think this has been wildly successful. We got two of the biomes. And, well, it's going to be here to stay. Hold on. Uh, we can straighten it out. It doesn't have to be tilted like that. Okay. There it is, our first Moho lander. Let's go to the R&D building and see what we can unlock with all this science.
Well, since we haven't unlocked the R&D build, the last uh, level of the R&D building, I guess we can just uh, finish up this stuff. That's all seismic stuff. Well, we got a lot of science from the seismic stuff, so I mean that's a good thing to continue to pursue. But let's see, field science, golf, um, rover parts, ducted fans, the Malamute parts. Heavy landing. Okay, well this I definitely wanted. Heavy landing. Because we want recoverable boosters, don't we? And then these are more airplane parts, which we would need if we want to do airplane things. But, you know, we've got the science. Let's just make sure. We're probably going to have to leave one out. So which one is the least important is the question. Well, I wanted these Omicron parts just to experiment with it. Okay, let's get that. Advanced metalworks. Steer slide. Docking port. Okay. Pedal adapter. That's fancy. Okay. High altitude flight. Well, that goes sort of goes with the Omicron package, I feel. Yep. And the Malamute is a curious thing we should investigate. I also have to check out all these wheels to make sure they're alright. Akita command seat. Doesn't actually show the seat there. I don't know about this Akita. I know about the pack rat. I've used that before. Okay, um, we'll uh, hold off on the seismic science stuff. That little tiny uh, Octo 2 is nice though. Generally like that one. But there's certainly more parts here. Okay. Alright, well that is quite a thing. We need to upgrade the R&D building and that costs how much? Well, well, I guess we've been saving up for it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So now we can move on to the higher sciences and we'll do that with our further missions. We do have missions to Duna underway so we'll try and get science from them. Of course if the Moho scanner actually manages to make it to where it needs to be we could uh, get some science from Eve and then Jewel. Uh, at the beginning of the next episode we per should probably start off by checking the life support situation after all the time warping we did to fulfill this uh, Moho lander mission. I didn't get any warnings, uh, so hopefully they're all right. But anyway, I'll wrap it up here, and then I'll say uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.